Dr. Andel, sometimes babies are born and the parents get a call about a week to 10 days later. They found something wrong in this thing called newborn screening. And they say, oh, you might have a problem with the thyroid. And they said, oh, they look up the internet and hypothyroid can lead to a big problem. What's that all about? Newborn screening was one of the greatest inventions of the last few decades in the United States and globally. Newborn screening was designed to detect children with serious medical conditions that would otherwise go undetected until irreversible damage was done. However, as a result of the testing needing to be extremely sensitive, that means not allow any children who may potentially have a disease to go undetected, most of the time, most of the time, the reports that come in are borderline cases that are ultimately normal. However, when a family or a pediatrician gets a call from the state in reference to newborn screening, it can result in a lot of anxiety until things are sorted through. It's important that if parents do get a call, that they speak to their pediatrician and most of the time will get the reassurance that they're looking for and only find out later that, in fact, the results are normal. But it turned out in this particular case, the kid had a, a thing called TSH and it was elevated and they confirmed it was true. What does that mean? Again, as a result of newborn screening being in place in every state in the United States and in many countries around the world, a condition called congenital hypothyroidism, which occurs in one in 5,000 live births, has been able to be detected in enough time to prevent that child from developing any complications from being hypothyroid or from having an underactive thyroid gland. Typically, these children will have a condition where their thyroid gland has not formed or has formed impartially, and as a result of that, they have um, just borderline function of the thyroid gland. If this is detected early enough, then the pediatrician or pediatric endocrinologist can institute treatment and the child can be spared any problems going forward. So the newborn screening program works, and in the rare case, in one in 5,000, when the child in fact does have a disease, if in fact the child is detected early enough, as is done by newborn screening and appropriately treated, that child has a bright future. So in other words, when you read about a kid that has hyperthyroidism in the newborn period, and they get treated, they don't end up with things like retardation and cretinism and things like that? Fortunately, cretinism, which was undetected hypothyroidism resulting in devastating neurological complications, is a thing of the past today in the United States. And this is because of how successful newborn screening is. So today, with treatment starting within a couple of weeks uh, after birth, uh, most of the children are in fact spared any neurological uh, problems going forward. And the treatment is actually rather simple, isn't it? Of all the endocrine problems in the world to have, and in fact of all the problems that a child can have, having newborn hypothyroidism is probably the easiest and simplest to treat. Simply administering a replacement dose of thyroid hormone is sufficient enough to take care of that child. And with frequent visits to the pediatrician or the pediatric endocrinologist where routine blood testing and monitoring can be done, that child looks towards a, a very, very bright future. Does that mean my kid can never get hypothyroidism if the newborn screening is okay? Can you develop it later in life? There are many forms of hypothyroidism. We've just now spoken about congenital hypothyroidism, again, a condition where the gland is partially formed or not formed at all. There are other forms of hypothyroidism. Uh, one of the most common causes is where the body recognizes the thyroid gland as being a foreign protein or a foreign structure and begins to destroy it, a so-called autoimmune disease. And when this happens, thyroid function goes down, thyroid hormone production goes down, TSH levels rise, and the baby or child now will develop hypothyroidism. This can occur um, in childhood and occurs uh, primarily during two times in a child's life, around the ages of six to nine, and then again uh, in the teen years, more commonly seen in girls than in boys, and again, very readily treatable by replacement doses of thyroid hormone. And the thing for parents to always remember in treating hypothyroidism 
is that all we're doing is replacing back to the body what the body is no longer capable of making. Unlike a treatment like antibiotics where we're treating a disease, here we're simply replacing back to the body in a way that's most natural what the body is no longer capable of making. Um, if a kid is in school and seems not to be performing well and seems to gain weight and someone picked up the cholesterol is all elevated, is that a sign of hypothyroidism? An elevated cholesterol, in particular the triglyceride levels, can very oftentimes be associated with abnormal thyroid function. However, it's important to always remember that in most cases of overweight, we do not find an abnormality in the thyroid. It is a common myth and common misconception that thyroid problems are the result or, the, excuse me, the cause of overweight in many children. In fact, the incidence of thyroid abnormalities in overweight children is no more common than it is in the background population and therefore oftentimes not the cause of abnormalities in cholesterol. Thank you very much.